Hi, I'm Marlon Walker and I'm live from Pelham's Wasteland and today I have got um, a bit of a, a different sort of thing for you guys. Um, I have had another of those uh, all too common terribly high chaos weeks, um, which is why I haven't posted anything up until this point this week. Um, but I am hoping that that is going to settle down. Um, I think that the next couple of weeks look a lot more low key. Um, so that'll be really nice and I will be um, able to kind of get back into the habit of all of the things that I like to do in terms of live from Helm's Wasteland. Um, but anyway, there was a another sort of thing that I saw that I wanted to share with all of you. Um, another uh, thread that I saw just while doom scrolling on Twitter, basically, which I do all too often, but every once in a while I see something that is interesting and I think worth uh, talking about or sharing or things like that. Um, anyway, this particular thread comes from Rob Donahue, and I will link um, the, the specific thread and Rob's Twitter handle, and also he has a blog called The Walking Mind. Um, Rob Donahue is, uh, one, it was, was one of the people behind um, Evil Hat Games and Fate, which is uh, so unsurprising. I would be interested in what he has to say after having enjoyed uh, Fate so much recently. Um, I'm not going to read out the whole thread, um, not because it's not worth reading, but rather selfishly to uh, take advantage of the value of uh, restating something in your own words for learning it better. So anyway, um, that's sort of what I'm going to do. Anyway, um, so the thread is essentially about uh, the concept of perception in game and the idea of sort of perception roles. Um, and especially the idea of how to make that more interesting and flavorful and not incredibly tedious. Um, and, and Rob talks about the idea that perception roles um, can be incredibly boring and also get into weird issues, right? Like, you know, if you have uh, a party of four or five characters all looking for something, do you, you know, have one person a role and then have other the other people do like support roles versus have everybody roll individually versus whatever else, all of the different ways that you might um, model perception. And what um, he talks about is this idea of other skills as perception, essentially, and, and especially this idea that um, using kind of other uh, fields of knowledge or, or elements of character understanding as a way to model information intake for those characters, right? And that you um, do a couple of things this way, right? The first off is that um, getting information that is sort of relevant to what the character wants to get has more to do with kind of what they know and what they're concerned about, right? So an example used in here has to do with if you have, you know, um, the, the fighter in a sort of D and D class term is, you know, looking around and, you know, trying to see if there are enemies in the shadows versus like the thief character looks around and is looking for escape routes, right? The idea being that the fighter doesn't want to get jumped on by ambushers and the thief wants to be able to run away if the ambushers are there, right? That these are kind of looking for similar, responding to a similar potential threat but in different ways that reflect those characters. Um, and that furthermore, this also creates a really interesting element of um, narrative uh, flavor, right? That you, as you play, you end up with this idea that, um, you know, the way that the characters understand the world is a reflection of those characters, right? Rather than a kind of, you know, sort of, sort of clear panel in between kind of character and world, right? That, you know, the way they see the world is based on kind of who they are, right? In the, the same way, right? It's a sort of classic 
thing um, that I suspect everybody has seen, you know, the idea of like the optical illusions, right? And so, you know, does it look like a rabbit versus look like a duck? And part of the point is it's the same image, but different people see different things in it, right? And this is sort of getting into the idea of creating a, a much more flavorful version of this kind of concept of, of rolling for perception, rolling to um, get information. And he goes on to talk about um, Feng Shui 2 and maybe also in Feng Shui 1, but I'm less familiar with that game. Um, Feng Shui 2 has skills um, and there are basically, I think there are, I counted them, but I have to pull up my document where I took my notes and I apparently didn't do that ahead of time because I am terribly foolish and just unbelievably unprofessional. Um, Anyway, uh, so the, the idea, so, okay, so there are um, 13 skills in Feng Shui 2, plus a number of attack skills, which are things like guns and martial arts and sorcery and mutants and stuff like that, five of those. So you have a number of skills, um, but each skill contains multiple, it has sort of multiple elements, um, and Feng Shui 2 is really explicit about this, that um, the skill components include uh, physical ability, right, which is the ability to do the thing that matters there, right? So skill, guns skill lets you shoot guns and hit people with them, but also you have things like um, fix it is a skill, and so that's for like repairing things, right? So if you have fix it, you know how to, you can, you can actually go in and fix things. But then you also have knowledge, right? And so knowledge is sort of the idea of the, the accumulated, not necessarily kind of direct ability, but relevant knowledge related to the skill, right? So in the guns example, this is things like, you know, knowing about different like gun manufacturers or things like that. Um, or Mr. Fix-It might include things like, you know, knowing about like the way that a lot of the machines that you might need to fix work. And then the third component is context. And the idea being that if you are somebody who is, you know, good at something, you know, other people who are good at it too, right? Um, and so the, the idea being that you have some level of contacts who are associated with or involved in that particular kind of use of that skill. Um, and Rob Donahue basically suggests that you could pretty easily add a fourth element to that and just do uh, perception on there too, right? So that if you know about something that's also related to, right, your skill is part of how you take in information rather than having like a generic perception or notice skill, right? That you use a particular skill that is relevant to a certain kind of field of knowledge and that's how you take in information. Um, and that that also gets into kind of what sort of information you want, right? So in that example, right, your um, guns skill might be good for kind of looking at a, a situation and thinking about kind of like firing lines and cover and all that sort of stuff, right? If a fight breaks out here, what am I going to do? Versus your repair skill might come into play with like, okay, you know, looking at things and trying to figure out like, you know, in that same situation, maybe it's like inside a, a warehouse or a factory or something and there's, you know, um, mechanical bits and things going on. And you're thinking about, okay, how could I use this to my advantage? All of that sort of stuff. And the idea being that, you know, those two characters with their different skills are looking out at the same environment, um, looking at the same kind of real world, um, but thinking about that real world in different ways on the basis of their skills. And I think this is a really interesting idea. I'm not entirely sure how to do it because in some ways it seems like the sort of thing that could very much end up being um, kind of heavily related to GM Fiat in a number of game styles, right? That you could end up with, um, you know, the GM's kind of a GM with a kind of even tighter control on information. But I think you could also move it towards a sort of, uh, to use the the terms that I think the, the Forge popularized of, you know, pawn stance versus actor stance versus authorial stance or author stance, right? That you could move into that sort of author stance and have, you know, maybe the player has that kind of clear access to the information of the world, but the character doesn't necessarily, and that the player is just expected to play a character 
or or kind of make decisions in that character's worldview, even though the player themselves has information that the the character may not have. And that's kind of an interesting idea. Um, anyway, so I think there's some some really interesting stuff there, and I thought I would share it because I thought it was kind of an interesting idea. Um, and it's something that I think I'm going to lean, I think I'm going to work towards that a little bit in my solo play stuff, because that seems like a, a really easy way to experiment with some of that, right? Because I think my um, one of the things that my solo play stuff has done is that it um, has given me kind of opportunities to experiment where I might not be as comfortable experimenting otherwise if it wasn't in a, a solo um, session, a, a solo game, right? That, you know, um, especially when you talk about like making kind of home rule changes and things like that, house rules in play right one of the things is that you know the the various players who are playing their characters have made decisions about their characters often especially in certain games kind of mechanical decisions that um are based on the rules that were being played with at the time and so then if you change the rules in play um it's not that you can't do that but i do think that there is a way in which if you you know do that too much and especially if the gm uh changes the rules without a lot of discussion with the players about what sort of rules they would like to play with or without a lot of opportunity to kind of tinker with or rebuild the characters to reflect the new rules that you can end up with the feeling that um you know the decisions made about the character um previously are not necessarily the ones you would make now as that player and i think that's a, a concern but with solo play right because it's just me right it's it's just my expectations as to what i want to do and so that allows for some level of uh flexibility and and almost selfishness in play that i think is uh kind of appealing in some ways so anyway um but i thought that was kind of a, an interesting idea um, some some kind of interesting discussion there about um, the idea of you know a character's kind of perception of the world as being kind of not a sort of perfect uh, understanding of the the external world, but being sort of shaped by their their biases and expectations and all of that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, so yeah, thought that was a, a fun thing and that uh worth talking to you guys about so anyway um yeah i hope everyone is doing well staying safe staying healthy and having lots of fun gaming i've been arlen walker i've been live from Helms wasteland and i will see you next time take care everybody